let's go oh, there, go. Ollie, then. We played yeah. this morning all six minutes of the most remarkable rave from Kiri Tamahiri Waititi that was posted oh, on I TikTok. I watched that last night. Yeah. You what did you... That. <laughs> did you have to use the beeper? <laughs> no, I decided not to, and I, though I mistakenly didn't warn people of the amount of profanity in it. Now, we had a really interesting call straight after that. It said, do not bite at this, Sean. This is class classic Marxist um, strategy that was literally a wolf whistle to get white people upset, that it was all political theatre, um, designing to race bait from the Maori party. Well, i kind of hoping it was, as appalling as that would be, because if that is truly what someone deep inside the Maori party believes, and she is, she's the chief of staff, she's the wife of a co-leader, she's the daughter of, of the president of the party, Yes, I'm just going to say it is very disturbing. <laughs> it is very disturbing, isn't it, Chris? Or is it political oh, theatre? I watched that last night, and I didn't read it as political theatre. Um, I read it as the sort of politics you get yourself into when you have to keep upping the ante, um, partly to keep the cameras trained upon you and the microphones held under your yep. nose, uh, but partly also because once you embark on a certain path in radical politics, it's extremely difficult to get off without looking like you've surrendered, without looking like you've become a sellout. But it's a road to nowhere. Well, it is a road to nowhere as far as we know, because we don't know very much about what the mood is in Northland, what the mood is in South Auckland and West Auckland or Porirua, because we quite honestly, don't um, pay much attention. Well, we do. In Northland, John Campbell's up there all the time. Shane, Jane li Shane Jones lives up there. Yes, but Shane Jones, I think, is on the other side of the fence um, uh, to Ms. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised to hear him singing a slightly different song, but... You know, I mean, it's 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 a problem we have. It's 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 what the generals would call a failure of intelligence. You know, some of the the, the great defeats of history, military defeats, are because one general didn't know what was happening on the other side of the hill. Yeah, um, and to win battles, um, and you to do win need to know. Yeah, you do need to know. Okay. Well, uh, have we glimpsed I'm, the other I'm, side of the hill with that rant? I, I, I think I, either it was just a rant and it's not attached to anything, but we kind of know that's not true because, as you say, this person is, is uh, very well connected. It's hard to imagine anyone being more connected yeah. to the power centres of Te Pāti Māori. So it's not just a random ranter on the internet. Um, and... Because the intelligence we have, I think, is so scant from those communities, we don't know well, no, whether... No, 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 Chris, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Look at the proportion yeah. of the Maori vote that the Maori party got. They're minuscule. Yeah, but they won all six seats. Yeah, but look at were, the 17% of this country are Maori. They got 2% of 17% of votes. Yeah, but I think that's a risky way to judge what's happening on the ground. Well, it's data. Um, it's, it's, it's a very risky way because a lot of things happen at the same time in a general election. A lot of decisions are made yeah. um, which have a strategic aspect, not the least of which was Maori and the Maori seats giving their party vote to Labour yeah. and their electorate vote to, to party Maori. Yeah. I mean... That worked extremely well for them. 
Um, and to say 3% is true, but perhaps it doesn't tell us quite enough. Mm-hmm. And I think this is, this is the problem we face. Either that rent is, is just that, a rent, a rather you know, foul-mouthed and uh, an extremely angry rant, or that person was speaking for a large number of people, and if she is speaking for a large number of people, and if what turns um, out today is a large number of people, then we're in trouble because what that rant said was we can detach ourselves from New Zealand society. We can um, refuse to cooperate, and that's putting it in the kind We can launch our own full-on attack, was the actual words. Exactly, exactly. And that's not good. That's not good if only 1% of the population answers the call. That's still not yeah. good. So what is our response to this then, Chris? As a society, what's Parliament's response? What's the government's response? Because at the moment, mainstream media and the government looking the other way, mate. Yeah. Well, I know what I would do. Well, what would you <laughs> what do? What I would do... What I would do is I would um, announce the election of a constitutional assembly and I would charge that constitutional assembly with drawing up a New Zealand constitution and when they had completed that task, um, that constitution would be put to the people of New Zealand to be voted either up or down. Um, And... um, that is what I would ask the country to do because I think we have to do something like that or we're just going to find ourselves in so many knots that we can't untangle ourselves. And would that constitution, if it were to be passed, would it supersede the Treaty of Waitangi, Chris? Uh, 